Can you give us your thoughts on the current state of the 30 series GPUs and their VRAM limitations, mm. specifically from the 3060 Ti to 3070 Ti? It seems like it's already started to become an issue with the newly released RE4 remake, so Resident Evil 4. As someone with an RTX 3070 laptop GPU, should this be a concern to me? I imagine the VRAM limitation will only get worse in the future which also begs the question why NVIDIA cuts corners like this on high-end products. They can't pretend they didn't know VRAM would be an issue in the future. Uh, <laughs> it's an issue. Well, I mean, it's an issue, but it was known at the time. It's not like they scammed you or whatever. It's mm. okay. Well, some people didn't want to believe it was an issue at the time. Well, that true. So uh, I guess as, as an example of that, I reviewed, obviously, the RX 6800, so the Radeon RX 6800, which has 16 gigabytes of VRAM. And I also reviewed the GeForce RTX 3070, which has 8 gigabytes of VRAM, 3070 Ti, and the 3060 Ti, which is probably more forgivable as it's a lower-end part, but whatever. Uh, I did a big head-to-head -head benchmark between the RTX 3070 and the RX 6800. Noted that performance overall was quite similar. Yeah, better ray tracing on the 3070, though I questioned how useful that would be in the future. Uh, I was criticized heavily for that, apparently, uh, or evidently. And the main difference that I said would sway me towards buying the RX 6800 was the fact that it had twice as much VRAM, and I didn't take that lightly. I noted at the time that, yeah, look, 8 gigabytes of VRAM is perfectly fine. You'll get by in pretty much all situations. But a couple of years down the track, I think if you're buying this car and you're planning on keeping it for three, four years, you'll find the RX 6800 will actually enable a better gaming experience. While I haven't revisited those yet, I plan to very soon, it does seem like the 16 gigabytes of VRAM has aged significantly better than eight. Um, Hogwarts Legacy is terrible on the RX, uh, sorry, the RTX uh, 3070, like the high quality preset, which is the second highest quality preset, so not the ultra maxed out preset with the second highest level of ray tracing. I think it 1080p, you're looking at over 60 FPS on an RTX uh, 3070. Like it has that throughput, that raw compute performance, but you run out of VRAM, even on the second highest quality presets for both ray tracing and just the general visual quality settings. And it'll crash to desktop, it'll run poorly. Even with the latest, most patched up version of Hogwarts Legacy, eight gigabytes of VRAM is still a problem with ray tracing enabled, even with dialed down quality settings. Whereas um, with 16 gigabytes of VRAM, no problem. So removing RAID, don't make this an AMD versus NVIDIA thing. Let's forget about Radeon and not make it like mm -hmm. this silly fanboy argument type thing. Let's pretend like Radeon GPUs don't even exist because they're not really relevant to this actual conversation. I know I talked about the head-to-head -head video, mm -hmm. but it was more my opinion that more VRAM would be beneficial before too long. And here we are. And had that card had 16 gigabytes of VRAM, it would be able to play the game. So, yeah. like, I mean, like that's I, I can't that that is that's a big deal, right? Like, it's not a situation where we're dialing up the quality settings to the point where the fact that yeah. it's running out of VRAM isn't the primary concern. It's the fact that you're getting twenty frames per second or thirty frames or even forty. But this is a card that can do comfortably over sixty FPS had it had enough VRAM. But the second yeah. you walk to a new area and you fill up that VRAM buffer, it just turns into stutter city. You also, I showed Tim just before, as, it, as luck would have it, I was doing a little bit of testing. And even on the medium quality settings, so medium quality preset settings, but with ray tracing enabled, you just had texture popping constantly. Like you could stand, you could stand on the spot and you go compress textures that look awful to the actual proper textures. And it just kept swapping in and out of memory. It was this weird thing in Hogwarts Legacy, but it's not the only game. There's plenty of games that yeah. have these problems. I think they're... With these discussions, it comes down to, and we were talking to you about this earlier as well, there's a few factors that go into this. I think one of them is that at the time that these products were and launched with not enough VRAM, it was... For the future. For the future. Mm. It was it, it was criticised bringing... When you bring that up as sort of an issue with the product, it was easily dismissed by people. You well, were, you were, Not only were you criticised, but people were like, that, that's not a problem. And I'm not trying to say AMD was better or by AMD because of this reason. I'm just saying, here is what I believe to be a problem before too long with this product. Yeah, and I think, you know, with the these VRAM things, it's always something that doesn't appear on day one, mm -hmm. which makes it very difficult for people to sort of grasp 
what impact it's going to have. Mm -hmm. Because when you look at the day one reviews and you see all the performance data and it performs well, there's maybe one or two circumstances where VRAM is on the edge, mm -hmm. but mostly it's, it's going to be fine. You look at that and then someone like you in the conclusion is saying, well, it's probably going to run out of VRAM in a few years. There's that disconnect there. People are sort of looking at the performance. It looks okay. And then someone's saying in two or three years or down the line, it's not going to be great. Like I'm trying and to so, unfairly water it down. Yeah. So it feels like that is kind of a bit unfair mm -hmm. because you're sort of bringing up a point that's not really relevant. It doesn't feel relevant because there's no games at the time that really have that issue. So people sort of dismiss it as a, as an issue, and you know we cop a bit of criticism, which again, you know, a bit. <laughs> it's it's that that's fine. You know, people yeah. people are, are free to criticize our videos, but I think it goes to sort of I don't know whether it's like a lack of experience or it, it's just I get where I get where people came from at the time. You mm. look, like I said, you look at the performance; it looks fine. You're not really thinking about two or three years down the track, whereas. Us as reviewers, we've sort of we've seen these things play out before with cards. You know, the transition from say four to eight gigabytes of VRAM for flagship models. I saw it from one to two. One to two. You know, <laughs> you can go back as far. You know, as far as where gigabyte wasn't even considered in terms of the amount yeah. of VRAM. Yeah, I remember megabytes. So anyway, yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's sort of we know that there. It, it can often creep up quite quickly where there comes a point where games come out and the cards suddenly just don't run games very well. And I think for people that were sort of newer to, to GPUs, this might have been their first GPU or second GPU generation, there was a period of time for quite a while where 8 gigabytes was perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. Whereas we were sort of looking at it, we were sort of comparing it to what we'd seen in the past with things like the 2 to 4, 4 to 8 gig, where it sort of looked like it was getting a bit dicey. And we sort of used our experience and our historical knowledge to sort of say, well, this looks like it'll probably be a problem. And this was further evidenced by looking at game consoles, which were just launching with 16 gigabytes of unified memory, which means that game developers, more likely than not, were going to be thinking about producing games using 16 gig of VRAM because they have access to that on what is a mid-range, mid-tier performing system. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when we sort of judge up all these factors, we're weighing everything in, we're seeing, oh, what happened previously in the past? You know, where, where are things playing out now? Are there any edge cases now? What are the consoles doing? we can come to the conclusion that VRAM is an issue. Whereas again, for people who are sort of, you know, they're just looking at things today and haven't, maybe this is the first PC that they're building. Mm -hmm. Again, I think it's understandable why people didn't see that as that significant of a problem. But unfortunately, what that means is that what's now playing out is that games indeed are using more VRAM. People bought those cards that maybe didn't weigh that factor significantly enough and are now unfortunately, getting a bit burned with some of these games coming out like Resident Evil. I've heard Diablo 4 beta uses a lot of VRAM. Whether or not that has any performance impacts, I'm not sure. Um, Hogwarts Legacy, more ray tracing games coming out that where ray tracing increases VRAM usage. And I just find it very unfortunate. You know, it's kind of sad to see someone who spent, potentially during the, the cryptocurrency boom, has spent over $1,000 on a product like a 3070 Ti or 3070 that now can't run their games on ultra settings with ray tracing simply for one reason, and that's because it wasn't a 16 gigabyte card or 20 gigabyte card. Yeah, it's, it's tough, especially if you had to bought that over uh, a 6800 XT or something like that because you were more interested in the ray tracing performance. And we mm -hmm. were recommending a 3070 over a Radeon GPU if you cared about ray tracing. Now, admittedly, you could have enjoyed ray tracing in all the games that have come up to now, yeah. but... It was a limited time only deal, I suppose. And not that ray tracing performance has improved on RDNA 2, but it's more that if you can play stuff like Hogwarts Legacy at 1440p using the ultra quality settings, but with ray tracing disabled on an RX 6800, but that I know for a fact that is stuttery and a bit sketchy on the 3070 because you're looking at like needing about nine gigs of VRAM, you are getting a better experience on that card with twice as much VRAM. Yeah. And it's difficult with the with the reviews as well because you do have to toss up what's the performance like for the next two years versus four years. You know, for some people they may have strongly preferred that performance now, the better performing card for ray tracing. Which is reasonable. For those first two years. Mm -hmm. And they they've downweighed the performance 
in four years' time, which is a perfect, like I said, it, 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 it's such a difficult discussion because we always sit here saying, you know, oh, everyone should have bought the 16 gig card because it was obvious this was going to happen and you're really dumb for not buying the 16 gig yeah, card. It's not that situation. It's the, there's so many different factors being weighed up into this. I just think it's. It's, it's more the point that it was reasonable to acknowledge that being a potential weakness. Yeah, it was reasonable and it's just disappointing that NVIDIA didn't include more VRAM because mm. a 3070 with 16 gigabytes of VRAM would have been a killer product. Well, it would it, still be great today. It would be awesome today, would have been yeah. a, a great buy. And again, for those people who spent like $1,500 on it during the pandemic, whew, they'd yeah, still be able, using it today just that's fine. That's right. If you buy a product like that that you can enjoy for, for multiple years, you're satisfied with that product and... You're certainly mm -hmm. willing to go back to that brand and buy another product like GTX 1080 Ti owners. I don't think there's yeah. many too. Don't think there's too many GTX 1080 Ti owners out there that bought that product for seven hundred dollars US and are like, "Damn, I wish I hadn't have bought that. It was a bad value product or it didn't work out." Basically, nobody. Everyone's happy with it. So yeah, example of a good product. Yeah, and I think with you know these VRAM things on you know the upcoming cards potentially only having like eight gigabytes of VRAM at four five hundred dollars US. You know, it's, I find it interesting that a company like NVIDIA is very much tends to be on the forefront of technologies. They're, they're first to ray tracing. They're first to DLSS-like upscaling. They've been first to frame generation. And yet stuttering is a big issue in modern games. And that is something that can usually be improved by more memory allocation. You mm. just load more things in, it, it stutters less. So it's it's interesting that we've got NVIDIA being always at the forefront of features, but then there's this obvious hardware feature that they're not at the forefront of. It's very much a disconnect between they want all, they want people to buy cards for getting ray tracing now, but then the VRAM thing is kind of left behind. It, well, feels, it feels kind of weird there, it? Doesn't does it? feel weird, but it all makes perfect sense because it's all about money and features yep. like DLSS uh, ray tracing have all been uh, well brought to the forefront to sell product. Mm -hmm. VRAM doesn't really sell product. Mm -hmm. um, and it clearly, I think it will. This, I think it will these days well, as people learn more about I, it. I think it'll become increasingly important. But I think for a long time it was just like four gigabytes or eight gigabytes didn't really make a difference. That was the thing yeah. for so long, uh, and that's why we didn't talk about it so much back then. And in fact, with like the RX four eighty, initially we were like, well, the four gigabyte model is better value, and that was mm -hmm. true for many years. It wasn't until people were still buying them four years mm -hmm. later that eight gigabytes was necessary. Although it's um, pretty crazy that card was two hundred and forty dollars in twenty sixteen with eight gig of memory. It is different type of memory, but still, yes. um, yep. still applies. Uh, but planned obsolescence. Yep. And cannibalizing professional grade products yep. is probably the biggest one there, because if they start offering. Mm -hmm. gamers 20 gigabytes of vram then that does cannibalize their professional products that they charge a lot more for yeah so. and you know it seems like amd is willing to offer more vram so that's potentially a point of of competition for them this generation previously they have had that advantage but there's been as you say less of a uh, less of an immediate impact mm -hmm. so with like 6800 versus 37 it's not a here and now this is impacting your buying decision was potentially if we had an eight gigabyte NVIDIA GPU and a 12 gigabyte AMD GPU at the same sort of price, I think they'll have a much more significant impact for today. There'll be clear examples where the 12 gigabytes of VRAM would have a benefit. So uh, double would obviously be the... Yeah, double yeah, would be... Double's huge. That's where it's very significant. But yeah, I think this VRAM sort of thing has kind of crept up. And in 2023, as we hit more towards games that are developed exclusively for the latest generation of consoles... We're going to see games where this has a quite a significant impact, and you know what I would like to see is certainly more, I don't know, more testing and focus maybe on looking at you know those games that do have those pervasive stutter issues that people are complaining about, where you you're moving from one section to another, it's just stuttering like crazy. People are always being like, oh, why isn't this fixed? Why aren't game developers able to address this? Is this something where the fix is as simple as using more VRAM, which in which case buyers of those high VRAM cards would get a benefit in those games where it stutters? Mm -hmm. um, these are things that I think would be you know, sort of interesting to look at because it could make it could be that sort of selling point advantage if that that's a, a potential fix. Because you know, you fix ray tracing by adding more ray tracing performance. Is just, is stuttering fixed by more VRAM? Well, it's more VRAM and also in those instances more system memory because obviously if you yeah. start to spill over a VRAM, that's where it ends up. You fill that up and then load yeah. other sections of the game becomes problematic because and it's it's how the game works too. We can't yep. just say throw. 
24 gig of VRAM at a game that fundamentally does load that a game that way. Mm-hmm. Because, but then again, my thinking is, you know, is the game being designed that way to avoid, you know, performance issues on eight gig cards? But if it was designed a bit differently to work well with 16 gig cards, would we have a more smooth experience for those high end buyers? Mm-hmm. I think that's sort of a. I'm interested to see how that plays out, but obviously we're talking about hypotheticals then now. Um, but VRAM, it is an issue, and if we see a five hundred dollar card with eight gig in twenty twenty three, ooh, that is not, not going to be good. Not good at all. But I, I feel we're going to. Yeah.